a lady just met me now and said, I want to be in politics. And like I said, that's why I'm here. And he said, I am from Imo State. I said, it doesn't matter. All matter is that you must start from home. But really, was Philip Shabu interested in politics? No. Actually, didn't plan politics. But before I left University of Joss, in my yearbook, I knew I was going straight into politics. But when I was coming to University of Joss, that was not why I came. I came to learn so that at the end of the day, I want to be counted among those that will be found worthy in character and in learning. <laughs> I came into Joss and I was confronted with uh, at 101 as an accounting student. And that's where my thesis started. And at 101 had a lot of spillover students in that department. In fact, the spillover students were more than the entire students in that department. And I asked a question, I said, why this at 101? And I went into the class one of these days, and they were just a number that doesn't exist, minutes. I said, I'm supposed to be studying accounting. Why are we dealing with numbers that don't exist when we are balance sheets? So can you balance a balance sheet without seeing the numbers? And as the lecturer, I said, sir, I have a question. He thought I was going to ask about what he's teaching. I said, they told us that you have been talking about limits, limit, limit. And each time you talk about limits, you tell us this number does not exist. Sir, accounting is it all about number that don't exist or number that you can see and balance your sheet. You say number that you see and balance your sheet. I said, then we don't have business with limits. And that's the activity. But as a jam bite, my first one week, I was still carrying my fire for registration. I will start protest. <laughs> I didn't know people were to me, and I, those guys that I was leading, some of them, five F, uh, uh, four red level spillover student. <laughs> me, I just, I just, I'm not a month, I'm leading four hundred level students. We need more young people in politics, but the question is, what kind of young people do we need in politics? Can you be trusted? to be given leadership. Can you pick leadership from the ground? Today, young people are doing well all over the world. You can see France, we have a 39-year-old president of uh, France. In Nigeria, we have our own leadership man here. He was 31. He was president of this country. And he was, when he called Yakubu Gawan today, what follow is go on with one Nigeria. Today, that one Nigeria has been threatened, right? You talk about Antonio Nauru. He was 30 when he moved the motion for the independence of this country. Another young man. The problem of this country, people say leadership. I agree. But leadership also has to do with followership. The content that the followers have will also shape in what the leader will do. When you have followers that can take anything, obviously, leaders have liberty to anything. Look at this slide, for instance. On the left is Nigeria, on the right is Japan. Nigeria blessed with natural resources and also human capital. Japan, blessed with human capital, but not natural resources. Volcano everywhere. But look at Nigeria, that is everything. Look at Japan, that is battling with volcanic erosion. See how they transform their own economy, that will now run there for technology and everything that we need. Before two or three cars pass, you must see a Japanese vehicle. Even in your houses, their products are there. That is what they turn their own economy. Leadership there has transformed what they don't have, got 
to think and think deeply on how to convert what they don't have disadvantage to our advantage. Whereas we in Nigeria have a deep side, we just relax, feeling that everything is there. And the greatest problem we have had also is with that slide. At times, I said it's good for this oil to just dry up so that we we'll come back to our senses. <laughs> for now, which time I go to governor's forum, when my governor is not there, I always go there. Everybody is thinking out of the box. And I, I sit and I watch them debate. And I said, if we have been debating like this, when it says crude oil, we won't get to where we are today. To answer the young lady, you have to start from home. First, you must choose who is your mentor. Who is that person you are looking up to that has done it well? First, what is your own character? What is your competence? Are you disciplined? Because in everything, discipline is number one. And before you talk about competence, because if you have discipline, every other thing will follow. Because anything that you are asked to do, what comes for us is if I want to I want to get the best out of it. And the direction that is given to take that you think you get to the best, you stick to it. But when you are not disciplined, just like uh, one of the speakers said, for you to put on army uniform, you must first be trained to be a military man. So by the time you are wearing your uniform, you are now what? The real soldier. And you can take, you have been shaped to be a soldier and nothing more. It's the same with politics that is progressive, not the politics of business. Because when you play the politics of business, money is first. Mrs. Nasser is on the law department. I think she's Professor Nasser now. Yeah. She told me, young man, why are you in accounting? You will be, you will be best to be a lawyer than to go and be, I said, no, my parents said I should be an accountant. <laughs> Say your parents, but looking at your grade, okay, bring your first semester courses, bring in let me see. I took them there. He said, you see, I did well in legal method. You see what you are getting in man management accounting, very low. You are better here. I can help you to change in your second year to read law. I go home, my parents said no. You have to be an accountant. And that was it. Second year, Samib, Samib, Dr. Samir, that is a professor now. He was a political science lecturer then. He called and said, You'll be better in political science. I can change from political science, uh, accounting to political science. I said, Sir, uh, this is nothing wanted to change me. I said, No, my parents said no. So let me consult with them again. They said, No. And that was it. I put myself through to read accounting. But today, throughout, since I graduated, I've never worked with that certificate. And when I became welfare secretary of the student union government, we engaged the school authority and engaged other companies that were doing business in Plateau State. There were some buses that were parked. In fact, they were about to auction them. And we had a problem with transportation that time. And I learned that in one of the courses, business management. Our lecturer taught us how to be entrepreneurial, how to combat, how to get private sector to buy in, social, com, social, no, social responsibility was arranged in law, a legal method. So, to learn from this lecture, I went to the school. I said, don't sell these things, give it to us. We will go and get people to fix it. This problem is fixing. We will fix it and we will run it. School said, You want to do transport and be a student. No, no. So we created a problem and they didn't have choice. They gave, <laughs> they gave us. I'm not selling this method though. <laughs> they gave us the buses and the first people we approached. Where after approaching practical riders, we sat with Kennedy Bichuku and the others, and we said, you know what, Plateau riders, airport fix one. 
Okay, let me go to help us fix one. We went around and they actually help us to fix all of them. For free, they fixed them and we fixed 11 of those wow. zero wow. buses. Wow. What is brought them to school? The school management, when they take it, say, no, we are not taking it. We will run it by ourselves. So what we, we got those uh, studying those courses of all the arts, I know we got them together and said, look, you are going to run this thing, help us find how we're going to manage it and how we're going to fund it to make sure that this thing work. Those buses worked all through. None of them ever broke down. And we were running it. The our girls, Aluta East, were the ones selling the tickets. <laughs> Have rooms where the, you go and buy the tickets. And those buses, even if it is one person, the minute it gets to the bus stop, it picks you and it moves. We run it effectively, and you know, I'm just telling you responsibility. Yeah. Then corporate social responsibility. And Julius Berger were tying the road. And we went to them. This course, you know, we have what we call three C's. Consultation, confrontation, um, co <laughs> consultation, consolidation, and confrontation. <laughs> you know, we were militarized that time during our bacha. So we we talk, we spoke to them, we consolidated, and they saw us those rascals. They told us, okay, you cannot even build this road again. That is when they were constructing the road to Bauchi. Say, if you don't fix this one, no way for you. I will block the road. <laughs> We are, we are talking to you gently, you think you can <laughs> And that was how Julius Berger had to work, and they helped to tie that from the Bauchi Road up to Abuja Hostel. They tied it for free. <laughs> then, Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola, a student drank Coca-Cola, and the following day, he had stomach upset. And we eat it on that Coca Cola. <laughs> <laughs> and we invited them to explain why Coca Cola will not be banned in Nigeria. <laughs> so it was, it just snubbed us. And we went to NAS convention the following week and we banned Coca Cola products all over campus in Nigeria. Then I was president of NAS. I made the pronouncement and that any Coca Cola truck, that you see, 100 meters to any campus. Take it and drink liquid content and return the bottles. <laughs> and and student complies. <laughs> and I came back to school, uh, then the VC, Professor Mamba, Call me and say, my son, you know you've been helping the school, but this one now is giving the school bad name and bad image. And I went to him, I said, sir, he's not giving up bad, school, uh, bad image. We went for a program in Ghana. They are, there's a product, Cola something. That they have what they do to schools. They build a village where that product is sold only. They provide recreational facility for the schools and also provide science, equipment, and some things to the school. So that's what I want to do with these people. He said, hey, I guys, we'll go ahead. He <laughs> said, but the violent aspect, take it. I said, no, if we don't do that, they won't negotiate. And the then uh, CP, uh, in the room, who became IG later, there was a CP here then call for a meeting, I said, I will not speak to the manager. You are speaking to the president of 14 million and one Nigerian student. I want to talk to a common manager? No, no, no. I want to speak to the owner of Coca-Cola worldwide. <laughs> and they said it's not possible. I said, okay, if it's not possible, that is it. As we were coming out of the Commissioner of Police office, the press were ready. Say, how did the meeting go? I said, the ban of Coca-Cola. To you. Today, go ahead. <laughs> and uh, the media spread the thing again, and more Coca Cola products were being consumed. <laughs> and they saw they have to close this their factory temporarily, and another factory like that. The regional manager won't come for South Africa have to come. 
we had a meeting in the Commission of Police Office, and we agreed that all over the country, there must be Coca-Cola delay. We spelled out everything in, uh, with additional facility in our physics laboratory and chemistry laboratory, and uh, the road that was constructed by Julius Bella, there was no street light. They also provide street light to Abuja Hostel. And they did it. Having done it, now had a press conference and said their products are good <laughs> and they can continue to sell for But the good news is that all over the country, I'm sure you know, some of you have Coca-Cola Village. That was what started Coca-Cola Village. <laughs> then there was another one. We, Abuja, uh, Abbasanjo became president. And many of our students were expelled and rusticated because of those riots. And Obasanjo was in, in detention when we were fighting for democracy. And he became the first beneficiary of our struggle. <laughs> and we told him in a meeting, I was president then of NANS, and I told him, I said, Mr. President, while you were in detention, we were fighting for this democracy. These students we are talking about, some of them lost their lives, some of them were victimized and everything. We're only asking for reinstatement. Some many of them are about 1,800 and something of them. We have the list. And we said in Iran that they are hooligans. I said, yeah, they were hooligans against the military for democracy to come. He said, why do you talk like that? I said, I'm president of 40 and 1 million Nigerians. <laughs> At the end of the day, he agreed and he refused. And we had to write, I had to write to the United States Embassy that Clinton should not come for a visit he wanted to come. That this man is not a Democrat. He's still behaving like a military man. And, everything. and that pains him seriously. NYC, 2,400 is too small. You have to increase the allowance. Rapture it will take place in our university if this year of financial autonomy <laughs> continues. So all these ones must be abolished. He says that all you want says. It's okay. You write back now. <laughs> we are going to be a committee. Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC President Adam Shomole will chair the committee. They announce a committee like that. And we do that now. We catch us moving. We agree. And I wrote back that. The man for printing, Clinton can come. <laughs> if many Clinton came and left, the man went back to uh, Saudi. <laughs> so we didn't argue, we said no problem. Three months coming, we plan for him. The student didn't know what I meant. October 1st, we staged serious riot in, in Abuja and say independent day must be disrupted. We planned it, they have their agent anyway. We said I must be arrested. And the code is was talking about now, our own code as assertivism was the president of NAS must be arrested. And when I'm arrested, there will be riots on the page. <laughs> <laughs> and they got the code. They managed me all through the program as we're going. There was no way. And the president was about to talk. I just went close to it. Uh, I gave the slap. <laughs> the man didn't know. And as I gave him slap, his voice descended on me, beat me up and threw me into. I nearly did that. Guys that were standing matching the air, they started removing their shirt with their placards. That was, that was how it was disrupted. And if you Google October 1st, 2001, uh, and October 2nd, 2001, you see that slide. Nans disrupt Independent Day Anniversary. That one now, he now said, these people, I can't play with them again. <laughs> Call them and let us talk. And that led to copper salaries being increased from 3,005 to 7,000. <laughs> then those students were reinstated. The plan financial autonomy was abolished. You understand? So why I'm telling you this story is that you must know what you want and know how to get at that target. The method you take is very, very critical. And discipline must be in. You discover yourself. Follow that target. Pray to God.
Prayers without effort cannot work. Don't join the miracle centers. I say, no, don't go to church, go to mosque, but don't be cajoled into miracle without work. Work, pray, and work. The two must go together. If you don't pray and you don't work, manners will never come from, from God or from heaven. The only manner that will come is discovering your talent, pursuing it, packing it with prayer. God will make it work for you the way it makes it work for you. Thank you very much.